Hi, I'm Nicole from Liberty Park Music, and I've repeatedly come across a few common questions related to learning music theory, so I wanted to make a quick video addressing some of these. In this video, I'll cover the question, what are clefs? In short, to give you a very quick answer, clefs are keys, but not musical keys, more like metaphorical door keys that unlock certain ranges of musical notes so they can be represented on the limited size five line musical staff. The Latin word for clef, clave, also means the kind of key you'd open a door with, and that persisted in Italian with chiave and in Spanish with clave. We got clef from the French. Because the five line staff with its lines and spaces only covers about 10 or 11 notes without ledger lines, we need to use clefs to narrow down which note range is going to be represented on the staff. Clefs do this by designating a specific landmark note somewhere on the staff, either middle C, the F below that C, or the G above that C, depending on the clef type, and having you read directionally from there. This chosen landmark note corresponds to one pitch or one key on the piano, not like how the letter names work, repeating once every octave. Each clef will mark the placement of its particular landmark note, and then you can read the locations of the other notes in relation to it. If this was all you were wondering about, I suppose you could stop now. But why not learn a bit more about two of the most common clefs? Keep watching to get a quick lesson on how to read notes in these two clefs. Some examples of the two most common clefs. The treble clef, one of the most common clefs you'll see in music that's in higher ranges, marks where the G above middle C is. Basically, if you sit down at a piano and sit right at the middle of the keyboard, this particular G will be almost exactly in front of you. It sounds like this. The treble clef marks this particular G by curling around the second line from the bottom on its staff. The G above middle C then will always be notated on that line when using treble clef. While hundreds of years ago you could move the treble clef or any other clef wherever you wanted on the staff to show where you wanted G to be, you probably won't see G clefs in any other positions these days. So now that we know where G is when we are using treble clef, we can then figure out where all the other notes will fall in relation to it. Each line in each space represents one white key on the piano. The black keys are accessed by using sharp and flat signs, so you can count up and down from that G to find every other note that the treble clef will cover. Bass clef. As you might have guessed from the word bass, like a bass guitar or a jazz bass, the bass clef is used to notate pitches in the lower half of the piano's range and for lower pitched instruments like cellos, double basses, bassoons, trombones, tubas, and low male voices. Rather than marking where G is as the treble clef does, it marks the location of the F below middle C, which sounds like this. Though originally an F clef could be placed wherever you wanted, today it is placed such that the two dots go above and below thus marking the F line. The landmark system works in the same way as it does with treble clefs. Each line in space represents one letter name with sharps and flats used to access the black key notes. They will look like this. As with the treble clef, you may find it easier to group all these notes into line notes and space notes, or you may just use F and the bottom G as landmarks. Here are the line notes and space notes. What about the C clefs? Didn't you say some clefs mark middle C? Yes, some clefs mark middle C rather than F or G. There are two C clefs that you're most likely to run into as a classical musician. They are alto clef and tenor clef. Here is alto clef. It marks middle C rather than G like the treble clef or F like the bass clef. Here middle C is the middle line and the two backward C's in the clef sandwich the line between them. You can actually move the C clef anywhere you want on the staff, but if you move it, it is no longer alto clef. Tenor clef takes that same clef design and bumps it up on the staff, making the range lower, so it marks middle C as the second highest line. If you'd like to learn in more depth how these clefs work, and about some other clefs that are pretty rare but useful to know if you plan to conduct or attend a top conservatory, check out our various bonus lessons in Music Theory 3. Do you have any related questions or other music theory topics you'd like to ask about? If so, leave a comment and let us know. Thank you for watching this Liberty Park music lesson. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like and share it. 
If you want to learn more on this or any other music theory related topics, visit libertyparkmusic.com, which has full music theory courses from beginner to advanced levels. Our courses are all online and available 24-7 for you to stream.